You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. You all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Video killed the radio star. (laughs) Guess what, everybody? (laughs) It is a Freaker Friday, and yeah, uh, Grammy, I have gone kind of bungly bung buggles. (laughs) Ooh, ah. Okay, yeah, enough of torturing you. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're listening to Grammy Mary here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 3, and you are on the rocket chair, or I'm on the rocket chair. Maybe I'm on the rocket chair. Do I have rocket fuel? I don't know. Ooh-ah. <laughs> I love that song. Okay, yeah. Hi, everyone. Let's see. Um, yeah, reallibertymedia.com, channel 3. I'll get my shit together yet. <laughs> it's a Freaker Friday. And damn, I keep seeing some weird-ass articles. But first, I gotta say hey to everybody. Hey. <laughs> hey, Twitter. I gained another stalker over on Twitter. Booyah. Hi. Thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out. I really do appreciate you as a tweet heart. Oh, what? Oh, that's kind of a cute little... Okay. Uh, Let's see. Oh, I got to retweet this. Yeah, I'm live right now. <laughs> Ooh, ah. Wah. Okay. Um, oh, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, that'll mess with people. <laughs> As if anybody pays attention, like I give a shit, too. Okay, hi, Twitter. Thanks for listening. What do I got? I got five notifications. Holy crap. You know, I opened it up earlier today, and I had, like, oh, my Lord. I had 12 notifications. Sadly, most of them were other people commenting on, like, the Donald or some other silliness, and I was like, I don't give a shit. I just want to (laughs) scroll. Hey, Tessa. By the way, happy birthday, dear one. Was that yesterday or today? Let me look. Let me see. Um, I think I think it was yesterday. Damn it. I missed it. Happy birthday a day late, dear Tessa. I hope you had a wonderful day. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and close Twitter because, yeah, all I keep seeing is just these kid shit. Yeah, I'm tired of looking at it tired of looking at it okay over here on uh fn site thank you grim for tweeting me out and yes estrella i see you over here too and uh, yes diatomaceous earth does kill lots of bugs but you have to get food grade because the food grade diatomaceous earth is a crystalline form and that way you sprinkle it like along your window sills and along your doorways and if you have fleas like from your pu- your puppy or your kitty cat bringing it into the house sprinkle it all over the carpet like you would like arm and hammer or whatever sprinkle it on your critters doesn't harm your critters if they happen to lick it off it actually is good for them helps build a healthy skeletal structure for them and then the next day you just vacuum it up and you vacuum up all them dead bugs and why do they die because it's a crystalline structure and as they creepy crawly across that diatomaceous earth it cuts open their exoskeleton and they die kind of cool kind of cool in a creepy kind of weird that's just really weird grams you're saying kind of cool to kill critters but it gets the damn things out of my house. I don't want that shit in my house. And I haven't had any, but I do have diatomaceous earth. So thank you, Estrella. Uh, let's see. Vinny was on earlier today, too, with the Ponder Gander, and I missed it. I was kind of busy. Damn it. And I forgot to even say that it was going to be on, so I'm a slacker. Go ahead. Ground me. Please. <laughs> Tell me I have to go to my room for a week and the only time I can come out is to eat and go to the bathroom and then I can go back to my room. I would last maybe a day and then I would go buggy, but 
or maybe I would get caught up on my reading. I don't know. I also see Katie Troxell's over here on this effing site, as well as Cowboy Tech and Bob Renner. So, hey there, guys. How you doing? Um, Israeli lawmaker proclaims supremacy of Jewish race. If it comforts you to think that way, honey. That, yeah. I particularly identify as a millionaire, but nobody's believing it. I don't get it. I don't know why they aren't. Oh, well, thanks for sharing me over here on Effin' Sight, Grim. I appreciate that. Over on Facebook. Don't see a whole hell of a lot going on on Facebook. Although I do see Weeda. I see you, Weeda, and Mary B. Yay. Hi, Mary B. Wahoo. And, by the way, yesterday I made a batch of lemon ginger water. You know, it's kind of like making sun tea, only you put ginger and slices of lemon in your water and set it out in the sun. Oh, my God, I'm drinking it tonight, and it's yummy. It It's not going to last long. It'll be done tonight, and I'll have to make another batch tomorrow. Oh, darn. Oh, darn. Oh, Lisa B. is here. Yay, Lisa and I had a grand time last night. And, true to form... Any time I go up to Lisa B's, it just, it never fails. A storm breaks out. It just does. It's something about when Lisa and I get together, things, the atmosphere gets really, really fired up. And last night, holy smokes, was there ever a light show going on out here. Damn. I almost didn't need to have my headlights coming home at 10 o'clock at night because it was bright, all that lightning. But it cleared the air, and that needed to happen. All of that ozone cleared the air. Thank you, Mother Nature, for clearing the air for us. I really appreciate that. The reason I thought of Lisa B. is because she just posted this. Trust your truest friends. They are the people who don't walk out the door when life gets hard. They actually pour some coffee and pull up a chair. Yes, I see a flasher. Um, oh, I know, Grammy. You're such a sweetheart. I appreciate you sharing me. That, dark f that duck farted in your general direction, cowboy tech. You know, um, I had one of those moments last night. <laughs> And it was so freaking funny. I was, I was talking to my farmer friend, and I coughed. And not only did I cough, but... <laughs> and God, we laughed for probably 15 minutes. My belly hurt so bad. Okay, yes, that's my rocket chair fuel, y'all, just in case you're wondering. And yes, women do get the vapors from time to time. And when we do, everybody around just laughs their ass off quack 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 it was a loaf it was a barking wolf spider that's what my brother joey calls him over here on mines hey everybody over here on mines thank you rlm for sharing me over here i really appreciate you doing that as well and i was kind of a slack i was trying to get supper prepared while getting ready and yeah slacker slacker no mistakes only happy accidents really <laughs> <laughs> Not all accidents are happy, although last night's was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, well, and now to, oh, wait, do I need to say... Yeah, I don't know if anybody over on Informed Planet's listening or not, but hi, everybody over on Informed Planet. Okay, now to the place where you need to be if you want to give me static. <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh, I'm, gl I'm glad it tickled you, Beetle. Um, if you want to give me some static, if you want to chat along, any of that other fun stuff, if you're listening in on the Spreaker uh, broadcast, please come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Join the chat over here. Make up a nickname. Give me some static. I'll jibber jack back with you. But uh, I can't have that many windows open, not with my wonky, wonky, wonky. Will it's almost willy wonky. But not, because there's no chocolate involved. Um, yeah, my internet ain't the greatest. So, hi, Chloe. <laughs> okay. Barman, right up top. You know what? I need a sip. Because I've been, ooh, ah, the radio star. 
I know, see, there I went and assaulted your ears again. Sorry about that. Well, no, really, I'm not, but what the hey. Okay, hi, barman. You are so awesome. The most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Cowboy Tech, who is always, always hearing pleasant voices. Don't ever get your hearing checked, hon please because yeah you're so awesome i also see grimner is here and grimner is the rlm god don't you know and looky there the lovely moose girl is also here grim forgot to ask you earlier is it balls to the wall tonight or is it freaker's ball i remember moosey saying something about there was going to be some some shindig she was gonna like go out and have a life again damn it <laughs> Go ahead and have a life, Moose. Somebody's got to do it. But just just curious. I also see the lovely Kate is here. Hey, Kate, guess what? I got a couple of stories from Florida for tonight. Just saying. I also see Asmo is here. Hey, Asmo, how you doing, hon? Lovely Beth Z is also logged into the chat, as well as BTC Bob. Chalcedony is here as well, but still not talking much. The lovely Chloe. Hi, Chloe. Guess what, Chloe? I have five ginger plants and two turmeric or turmeric plants however you wish to pronounce that there's multiple ways of pronunciation for that depends on what country you're from or who you are I pronounce it however I damn well please but I I am so proud of myself I got ginger and turmeric to grow booyah and the rest of the stuff well the heat is yeah kind of wilting things Okay, uh, Free Enslaved is here. Hi, Free Enslaved. Oh, it's Balls to the Wall. Oh, she's at the Blue Ox. Okay, yeah. I thought maybe that was this weekend. Thank you, Grim. I'm here. Kind of, sort of. Maybe. Um, I be Don C is here. I also see Java, 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 Java Dr. Do is in the house. As well as Juana Taco. Nope. I'm I'm doing a, a taters and onions and Italian sausage kind of thing for supper. Okay, uh, Rain. Hi, lovely Rain. How are you doing? Please make it rain here because last night we had lots and lots and lots of sky sparklies, but no rain. And it was like, really? You brought the sparklies. You brought the clouds. You brought the wind. Why didn't you make it get a little bit wet? It would have been nice. But I did see some stuff right along the Colorado border, so I might get I might get lucky tonight and get some rain. <laughs> Hi, RLM Fluky, the Van White of the RLM channel. I also see Rob Works is in the house. Did you fire up the bubbler and I was just not paying attention, Rob? Hmm. I must not have been paying attention or something. Turmeric. Turmeric. Or turmeric. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on where you put the emphasis. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Tumor ick. It's a tumor ick. Okay, Vinny, don't you be sneaking back in the yeah. Ah, uh, Vinny. Shameless, I see you. I also let's see. Okay, that's wrong. Spacey's here. Space Wolf. God, I haven't been able to do sound effects because Trusty doesn't do the the Darth thing anymore. Damn it. Um, but Space Wolf is here and trust no one. Hi, Darth Roams. Beetle! Hi, Beetle. How are you doing this evening? Soikles is logged in. I got to chitty chat with Soikles this morning. That was so awesome. Thank you, Rob. I see you fired up the bubbler. I also see Colfax 101 is logged in, as well as Dakota and Frumpy. Hi, Frumpy. I'm, I'm actually... Never mind. <laughs> Hi, I be Don C. Woik. Okay. Yay, Cowboy got his signal back. Booyah, booyah. Uh, Kozoo is in the house, as well as Moy, 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 Moy. And Pox Box, as well as Poxified, Poxophone, Pawn Sauce. Wow, there's only three Poxes in the house. Damn. Skittles here, and I have not seen Skittles drop an F-bomb in a bit. I also see Vinny, who is flirting with Miss Chloe. Vinny, 
Then it keep your cybernetic hands to yourself, you pervy bugger, you. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the phantom of the chat. That makes it sound so much more creepy, don't you think? I think so. Okay. Yeah, the, the famous, I don't know if he's the famous traveler or the infamous traveler. Hmm. We'll have to worry about that later. Because where do I want to go? I have so many tabs open. Okay, the first two don't count because those are ones that I want to reread. Re 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 reread. Um, don't know. I'll save that for later. Uh, mm, uh, how about this one? This one's from WorldTruth.tv. I really like some of the stuff that they post over on Twitter. And even though I somewhat, I tend to go, uh, uh, when I read some of these, I still find it fascinating. And what this guy is holding looks like what was growing on my tree. Okay, so one man holds a patent that would crush Mon Satan and change the world. Booyah! This may be some of the most important information. What, you, uh, what you're about to read holds tremendous potential to radically change the entire world in many positive ways. Cool. So, Monsatan does not want this article to go viral. For if it does, it could very well bring their demise. Oh, well, see you bye. In 2006, a patent was granted to a man named Paul Stamets. Even though Paul is the world's leading mycologist, his patent has received very little attention and exposure. So why? Well, as stated by executives at the pesticide industry, this patent represents the most disruptive technology we have ever witnessed. And when they say disruptive, they are referring to it being disruptive to their chemical pesticide industry, which if you stop and think about it, if a pesticide kills bugs, who's to say it's not going to kill you too? Just take a little bit longer because bugs are an awful lot smaller. So, we can no longer deny that the pesticide industry is causing incredibly detrimental effects to the earth, people, animals, plants, and insects too. Because, you know, pesticides don't give a shit if they're a beneficial bug or an obnoxious, you know, asshole with wings like wasps. That's what I call wasps, assholes with wings. But... The rapid decline of the world's bee population is being attributed to Monsatan's chemical concoction that they sprayed over farmers' fields around the world. Though the number of countries who have kicked out or banned Monsatan is growing. Now the use of the chemical pesticides is a, um, a practice that absolutely must stop and new methods must be employed before it's too late. Yet, with Monsatan and now Bear, is Bear the parent company of that Frankensteinian kind of. Ugh. It's like the swamp creature and, and the thing joined together and made this Frankenstein's monster kind of corporation. In any case, they're generating nearly 16 billion with a B dollars. That's in 2014. Imagine what it's like now. And they certainly do not want anything getting in the way of that money flow. That kind of revenue gives them a lot of resources and abilities to suppress information that may be damaging to them. It also pads an awful lot of pockets in uh, with the leeches that be those those little underlings in DC and any other state capital or any other little house of government BS that's how the representative in my neck of the woods got voted out a lot of people found out he was taking lots of money from Monsatan and they went uh-uh uh-uh nope so like this patent of Paul Stamets Paul has figured out how to use Mother Nature's own creations to keep insects from destroying crops. It's what's being called smart pesticides. 
These biopesticides provide a safe and nearly permanent solution for controlling over 200,000 species of insects. And it's all thanks to the magic of mushrooms. Shrooms, the fungus family, which is not a member of the animal kingdom or a member of the plant kingdom. It is its own kingdom, and quite literally, it is the biggest kingdom out there when it comes to life on this planet. Fungus, and those ever so fungi. So, it won't, this author will not go into specifics about how it works, but for most of us, it won't really understand it anyway. So, to summarize, he does this by taking the Ento, okay, here we go. This is this is a fifty dollar word here. Entomopathogenic fungi, which is a fungi that destroys insects and morphs it into not producing spores. This in turn actually attracts the insects, who then eat and turn into fungi from the inside out. I've actually seen some videos about that kind of stuff, and it's kind of creepy cool, but it's still creepy. You know, it's not the blood and gore, we want more kind of slasher movie stuff, but it's still kind of creepy. So, for those of you who do want to do their own further research on the topic, this author has provided a list of links below that will help you along. So, as more people wake up to the damaging effects of Monsatan's chemicals and GMO foods, the demand of truly nutritious, pesticide-free, non-GMO, organic foods is on the rise. And as I say organic foods, I got to put this out there because I can't tell you how many times I've been shopping in the last month where I've seen all natural, organic, you know, those lovely little monikers that they use on the advertising gimmicks. And that's what they are is advertising gimmicks to get you to not only lean towards that product and purchase it without reading the label because a lot of people, oh, well, it's organic. It's all natural. We don't need to read the label. Yes, you do. Because I was talking with Lisa last night and she hadn't been feeling well and her um, friend of hers had brought her some Lipton chai tea. And she said, oh, just for shits and giggles, I turned it around so I could read the ingredients. And you know what the first ingredient was on this chai tea? It was corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup was the first ingredient listed. That means that is the component that there is the most of in that product. So, and it said, all natural. So, please read your labels because organic and all natural is being perverted. So, be careful, peeps. Would you see that stuff? Still read that label. And, you know, unless you know the producer, don't do it. Don't go there because they're, they're raping you with the prices of that shit. It's bullshit. Okay, back to this article. We're seeing more community gardens and urban forests being created, and more people are starting to grow food, not lawns. Permaculture is becoming more widely talked about and understood, and there is a major paradigm shift happening right now as our collective consciousness expands and awakens. These truly are exciting and monumental times that we live in. And we are seeing old world ways crumble and power structures fall as we wake up and step up to collectively create a more healthy and sustainable way of working, living, and playing together on this planet. The time has come and we can do this. And by the way, also want to put this out there because I've been to some of those things, you know, where you have all of these health conscious and tree hugging and save the world, you know, and I've even seen them wear the little save the world t-shirts and stuff. And they're, okay, F-bomb alert, they're fucking litter bugs. I have walked around after 
you see those people you know and you can tell who they are because a lot of times they have this shit blazing on their t-shirt or whatever the hell and they litter and so I come along behind and it's like god dang trash cans 20 feet away you couldn't walk that far oh no I was jogging I must stay on my path really really and then you see all of these people that are doing their marches you know for save the planet just say no to mon satan just say no to this just say no to that and how much freaking mess do they leave well that's why they have city people that'll come along and clean up the mess later well you know what have you ever stopped to think that maybe they wouldn't have to hire all those damn people and they could actually get a job doing something oh that they might really enjoy or that would be a lot more productive if you would just pick up after yourself you holier than thou self-righteous hypocrite yeah I'm calling your ass out I litter bugs just make me crazy and a lot of that is because when I was working <laughs> outside of the home um, you know I twice a year we would walk ditches and it's it was like a three mile stretch that we had to walk and you would be amazed what people throw out their car windows as they're driving down the highway it's freaking disgusting people are pigs do you not carry like a grocery sack that you can put your trash into and then when you stop to get gas guess what they have trash cans right beside the fuel pump you can throw that in that trash can instead of pitching that diaper out the window or pitching that bottle or pitching whatever the hell it is out that window wait till you fuel up dumbass and dump it in the trash there there are places for you to do that I know it's a shocker but hey if you really want to change the world and clean things up start with yourself first clean up after yourself what's this Glasgow fire blaze rips through oh that's not cool um, What's that? Oh, a divot. Divot. Is Moosey, Moosey in here chitty chatting? Vinny Titian? Vinny, what are you a Titian of? Are you paying a Titian? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay, I know, Rascal. I love you too, sweetheart. But you really got to stop with the claws. They hurt. Ouch, girly. Don't make me trim your claws. I'm going to do it anyway. Ow. Wouldn't be so bad, but she's puncturing the girls, and we just can't have that shit. I don't want to go around the room going... <laughs> <laughs> from the other end. <laughs> okay. Ow. Ow. Let me, let me share this. Kitty cat. Okay, Mon Satan needs to go away. Anyway, okay, now that I've done that one, let's see, where else? Um, okay, I got to go to this one because it's California. And it's like, really? Really? Do we need three of them? This is from ZeroHedge.com. Californians vote on a radical plan to break up state into three parts, which would be way cool because, you know, those that do not wish to have um, all of the BS from, you know, them, them, yeah, them people, the one, you know, the Nancy Pelosi ones and the Diane Frankensteins and yeah, ow, you know, if they don't want to have to put up with their bullshit or be represented by them. Okay, we're done with you. See ya. Hate you. Bye. So, according to this, a plan to split California into multiple states, which was until recently widely regarded as a quixotic quest with little chance of success, is finally starting to look like it could become a reality. Case in point, this week the campaign's backers managed to get their radical vision, which would divide California into three independent states placed on the November 6th ballot. Cool. 
according to the Los Angeles Times. So clearing this hurdle means that the measure is posing the biggest threat to California's unity in its 168-year history, though it's hardly the first attempt to break up the massive state. Since California was admitted to the US on September 9, 1850, it has survived more than 200 breakup movements or secede from US entirely. Oh, you could do that. That wouldn't bother me one damn b No, wait a minute, because then they would start getting all of... They would be in stiff competition for federal aid with Israel. Nah, I don't, I'm not sure I like that idea. Apparently, the most recent attempt, spearheaded by Butte County lawmaker, failed in 1993. But the initiative made it to the ballot because organizers like Draper managed to collect more than 400,000 valid signatures, enough to qualify the measure for the ballot. However, even if a majority of California voters agree with the organizers of the campaign, a group that includes venture capitalist Tim Draper, its success in November would only mark only the beginning of the legal wrangling that would be required before the state can officially break up. Yeah, I just, I'm just not that into you anymore. I'm, I'm, I want to break up. That, yeah. So, if ultimately successful, the partition of California would be the first breakup of a U.S. state since the depths of the Civil War in 1863, when West Virginia was separated from Virginia. As it stands, if it succeeds at the polls, Draper and his team would start by invoking Article 4, Section 3 of the U.S. Constitution, the provision explaining how existing states can be divided into new states but the plan would ultimately likely require approval from both chambers of the California legislature as well as an act of Congress. Oh my God, it's going to be an act of Congress to get this shit done. Okay. See, ain't going to happen. Smoke and mirrors. Um, how many people live there? Oh, hey, that's a good idea, Grim. That's a good idea. I will, I will claim my little section here as Grammy land and it will it will be known as Grammy land and the only thing taxing is my humor <laughs> okay <laughs> now nothing about Draper's historic demarcation of democracy would be easy where uh, were voters to approve his ballot measure, the effort would need the blessing of both houses of the California legislature, and they're full of commies, so g good luck with that act of Congress. Lawmakers who, in a sense, would be asked to abandon their posts. Oh, it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, seeing as how you guys all voted to split up, uh, if we approve this, then that means we're out of work. No. Ain't gonna happen. Sorry. Now the, <clears throat> excuse me. Draper's proposal says that the initiative acting under California's constitution um, power, power of voters to write their own laws would serve as legislative consent. And it is almost certain that er interpretation would end up in court, which, you know, what was this? Uh, of the people, by the power, by the people, for the people. What part of that shit? Oh yeah, that's another one of those smoke and mirrors. Pay no attention. Move along. We just told you those pretty words so you would go here. Go make decisions for me, that that would could drastically affect my livelihood or my life or my loved ones. Yes, you do that because you're a special kind of person. No. From there, the plan would need congressional approval, so here too, politics would presumably play a major role. Yeah, because those bloodsuckers don't want to stop feeding off of that. Give me that vein. Where California now has two seats in the 100-person U.S. Senate, the three seats would have, or, or the three states would have six seats in a 104-member chamber. 
that would dilute the power of other states and increase the power of what used to be a single state if it's six senators banded together on various issues. Really? Do you really think? Mm. Hmm. This goes on to explain lots of, oh, let's see, there would be South California, Central California, and Jefferson, which is North, uh, oh, wow. Six Californias proposed ballot measure. Whoa. So there would be Jefferson, North California, Central California, Silicon Valley, West California, and South California. Hmm. That would be interesting. You know, my state out here where I live, actually, uh, was trying to secede from the rest of the state. Basically, it was going to be a line west of my hometown and it was going to merge with part of Colorado that is east of Lyman. Why those distinctions? Well, because the terrain is basically the same from Lyman to Hayes. So, you know, pretty flat, lots of natural gas, not lots of oil, you know, those kind of tax revenue generators. And you got farmers, and you got cattle, and you got all this other fun stuff. And then on the other side of those lines, you have your metropolitan areas. Not to say that there's not farming going on in those areas as well, but it's mainly metropolitan areas or cities. And uh, they could give a shit less about those of us out here that generate an awful lot of their money that they spend at their neck of the woods and we get n none or very little back. I know how that shit works because I used to be on city council and I know how much money we had to send to the state every year as our tithe and how much they would send back because we were such good little participants. Um... So... Dun, dun, dun. You guys are pulling up. Oh, State of Frankenberry and State of Delusion. I like both of those as well. Those are good ones. Cool. Uh, dun, 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 dun. I better put this on the effing site before I forget. Hi, Estrella again. I see you're posting stuff. Um, oh, yay. Real ID bullshit. Uh, show me your papers. Kiss my ass. Hmm, this, this is going to be interesting to watch. I think I need my 3D, 3D goggles to watch this one. This California thing. Okay. Now... In the weird news, over on alternativenews.com, let's take a look at this one. This is just a weird one. And then there's another one that I want to, what is that? Hmm. Okay. No. Sorry. Okay, from naturalnews.com, transgenders increasingly want to revert back to original gender after having surgery. Who do they want to pay for that shit? Not me. Not me. And you know what? That's one of those things where it's be careful what you wish for because it may not be all it's cracked up to be. So, According to a top doctor and surgeon, a number of transgender patients looking to get their surgeries reversed is on the rise. Hailing from Serbia, Dr. Mir Miroslav, bunch of consonants with three vowels. <laughs> no, 
who is a urologist who splits his time between a clinic in his home country and Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. However, unlikely it may seem, Serbia has actually grown into an international destination point for transgender surgeries. And um, this doctor has been treating patients from around the globe for the last 10 years. Now he says that in the last few years he's seen an increase in the number of patients that he sees looking to reverse their procedures. He explains that in many cases these patients simply did not receive proper counseling and screening before undergoing their surgeries. You'd think that such a life-altering decision would be taken more seriously by medical professionals. But you know what? Medical professionals are in it for the cha-ching, by and large. And if they're not just in it for the cha-ching, they believe everything that they learned in school and that the AMA told them and what they don't realize is that Big Pharma and the AMA and a few other big behind-the-scenes people wrote those textbooks so that you could go out there and be the salesperson. You could be the drug pusher with the white coat for Big Pharma. Isn't that wonderful? So, uh, apparently prophets do come before patients. Ah, see if I would have read just a little bit further. And sex change operations surely do come with a hefty price tag. I would think so. I should, I think the price tag on that should be so astronomical that it's enough to convince you that, man, I got to come up with how much money to get this shit done? And it's not covered by insurance. Insurance is a scam, too, by the way. Just putting that out there. So, five years ago... The doctor says that he got a call from his first patient seeking to reverse the gender change operation. In the months afterward, he received another six calls from patients in similar circumstances. The trend of people looking to reverse their sex operations has seemed to continue. And he says he presently has six potential candidates looking for a reversal operation. Definitely, reversal surgery and regret in transgender persons is one of the very hot topics, he said. Sex change regret seems to be an increasingly common phenomenon, though there is little data to, little data to go on. As the doctor notes, transition surgeries are becoming more accepted, but reversal surgeries remain highly stigmatized. Back in 1993, The Independent reported that as many as one out of every 20 people who underwent a sex change operation would ultimately regret their decision. You know, I understand that. I have buyer's remorse, but usually when I have buyer's remorse, it's because I went ahead and bought that chocolate bar or I went ahead and bought those shoes because, damn, they were so cute and they felt good in the store. Then I get them home and I walk around for a while and they're just not quite as comfortable. I don't know what it is about those shoe store floors, but there's something hinky going on there. <laughs> so yeah, I've had buyer's remorse, just not for something like that. So, at the time, gender counselor and administrator for the Gender Dysphoria Trust, Fran, um, dis Dysphoria Trust, Fran Springfield commented that surgery is held to be the end of everyone's problems, both by gender identity sufferers and by psychiatrists. But there's no magical solution. Counseling can help weed out inappropriate cases. It is absolutely vital that those who cannot pay for private help should receive adequate counseling on the NHS. Well, you know, I think people do need to get counseling, and I think all of these people that are pushing those puberty suppressant drugs on their prepubescent children, those people should be locked up for child abuse. Seriously. And any freaking pharmaceutical company that makes those drugs should be jailed as well. That's just wrong. Just wrong. You know, people are... 
people seem to think that, oh, well, it's just my body. That's why I'm not happy with myself. No, it's got nothing to do with your body. It's everything to do with your mindset. Correct the mindset. You'll deal with the body. I don't like some of the excess that I have, but I deal with it because it's me. And the farmer likes it, so hey. <laughs> Okay, um, to go on with this, as transgenderism continues to grow more mainstream, it's hard not to wonder if the rate of regret is even higher these days. Recently, Bath Spa University, located in the UK, put the kibosh on a research project seeking to answer that very question. The university declared that James Caspian, a psychotherapist seeking a master's degree in counseling and psychotherapy would not be allowed to research sex change reversals, reversal, excuse me, hiccup, because it might harm the school's reputation on social media. Oh, oh, whatever will they think on Facebook? <laughs> God, you freaking morons. Research is supposed to be done because people are inquisitive, because they want to get to the facts, because they want to share information, and yet you have places like this that wish to quash that inquisitive mind. Fuck you. Oh, another F-bomb. Apparently, studying the potential shortcomings of transgender surgeries is just too politically incorrect. Caspian was asked to revise his proposal several times before ultimately receiving the notice that said, Engaging in a potentially politically incorrect piece of research carries a risk to the university, and attacks on social media may not be confined to the researcher, but may involve the university. And we're afraid of those people that are out there crying and whining and saying that you're not being very nice, you big meanie poo poo head. And now someone needs to call me a ambulance. Someone get Bath Spa University a frickin' massive ambulance, will ya? Jeez. That's why I call them the ivory towers of edu-craption. Because seriously, they're full of crap. So while transgenderism is picking up steam in the mainstream media, it seems that anything that might call into question the safety of transgender operations is flagrantly incorrect. What was that? I, yeah, my last blog. Were they mistaken or were they just wrong? Apparently, it's offensive to even raise awareness about the potential regret that comes with life-changing operations. Regardless of how you feel about transgenderism, the idea that sex change operations are a life-altering decision that carry a wide variety of risks, including regret, really shouldn't be up for debate. It's a serious undertaking and should be researched as such. And people should really, really have to go through a very long time to dis before they get... Because, wow, that really, and, you know, thinking that I want to be a girl, or I want to be a boy, or I want to be this, or I, sweetheart, the universe plunked you down in that physical body for a reason. Figure that out, and then follow that path. As is typical for the left, Anyone and anything who might disrupt their narrative is attacked and shut down because it's ever so much easier to slur than debate. Even trans activist Caitlyn Jenner was attacked by liberals over her political beliefs. Yeah. Because, you know, they will eat their own. And they... I don't know if they can eat their own young because I don't know if they can make them. People, you're messed in the head. Okay. Ooh. Get this one shared. That's just, don't go there, peeps. Just don't go there. Um, mm -mm. 
Yes, garlic is good for the heart. Thank you, Free and Slave, for sharing that. Cool. <laughs> oh, and I, I read up a little bit farther, and it's like, wow. Um, you guys are nuts. You're nuts. Vinny, you're crazy. Honey, if you miss it, apparently it's not big enough for you to get it. Get some tweezers, hon. It's okay. Nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> okay. Let me go look at my pocket, because I know I put a few things in my pocket as well. Seeing as how I'm on the health rant right now, let's go here. Shall we? This is from usahealthtimes.com. Oh, and guess what? That website was blocked due to a hijacker. Thank you, Malware Bytes, for doing that. I won't go there. It was uh, cannabis shrinks tumors, and the government knew in 1974. But guess what? I'm just going to delete this one, seeing as how where it is, is I don't want that shit in my computer. Thank you, Malware Bytes. How about this one? Let's see if it'll, if it's got any. Hey, Malware Bites didn't have a problem with this one. Booyah, I'm detected. So, from goodhealthylounge.com. Vitamin B17, the biggest cover-up in the history of cancer. Now, I would like to stipulate, and this is just my personal opinion, but it's based on a lot of stuff that I have read and uh, different doctors that I have listened to, uh, basically my own research and my own gut feeling. Cancer is not a disease. Cancer is a physical expression of a physical bodily dis-ease. Two words, dis -ease ease or hyphenated word if you will and cancer is caused because you have a buildup of toxins in your body that your body cannot deal with because it doesn't have the proper fuel the proper things like b17 to help you fight it so and well you know our ever so wonderful government and mom satan and lots of other people out there I say people because, well, people really aren't real either. Individuals maybe, but people aren't. That's a legalistic term. And we've all grown up using it. I, ha I have a hard time catching myself and stopping it. But in any case, to this article. Although science has advanced a lot in the past history, or in the past, past century, yeah, read it right, Grams, we still haven't found a cure for cancer. That's because there is no fucking cure. There is no cure. Your body heals itself. You need to give it what it needs to do its job. This deadly dis-ease is usually treated with harmful therapies, which may kill you. Actually, chemo and radiation are more toxic to you and shorten your lifespan just as much as untreated cancers. Just as much. Look at the those that survive past five years. Those numbers are very small after going through the chemo and radiation bullshit. Very small. Because it's hard to build that immune system back up when you totally trash the body. So, this is why we need natural alternatives to chemo or radiation in order to defeat the dis-ease. Luckily, there are plenty of options. And I do remember reading about this way back in the day, like cripes I think I think I may have even still been in high school or shortly thereafter <clears throat> in any case have you heard about vitamin B17 this rare vitamin is also known as laetrile or puricin puricin and amygdalin hmm. it contains glucose and hydrogen cyanide now, don't be scared of the cyanide content because apricot kernels only contain a trace. And it's dangerous only if you eat more than 65 apricot kernels a day. 
Really? Oh, have fun mowing, Chloe. That's my tomorrow morning endeavor, is mowing. So, many people are convinced that cyanide can destroy cancer cells as well. It enters a cancer cell along with the glucose, which, yeah, it loves the glucose because that's what it feeds on. And, um, uh, glucose and benzaldehyde. Hey, I think I may have even said that right. And it effectively kills them from the inside. Or at least, as some scientists think, using this compound rationally can be, or using this compound rationally can be a potent cure for cancer. Or it can just be feeding your body what it needs to have in order to fight off any kind of dis-ease or invading army, if you will, be it bacteria or virus or whatever. Everything stems from inflammation, though. Everything does. So Big Pharma covers it up. There have been studies on the effects of Laetrile on cancer, and we will never see the results. Some doctors have used Laetrile on cancer patients, but the FDA banned the treatment quickly afterwards. And this was done so Big Pharma can protect their profits from chemo and radiation. However, besides shutting down the treatment, Dr. John A. Richardson and his colleagues managed to publish the results of the research in the book Laetrile Case Histories. Now, when one of the Sloan Kettering reporters tried to publish the uncut version, he was fired without explanation. Cancer is a big and lucrative industry. Big corporations are making millions out of it, if not billions. And hiding important information about natural treatments is the priority of Big Pharma, which causes the deaths of millions of people. And seriously, I listened to Dr. John Bergman a couple weeks ago, and he was talking about cancer and how it's all a fraud. And if you stop and think of how many years they have been researching, and you're only allowed to go, you know, it's just like Bath Spa University, you're only allowed to go into certain areas of research, and you do what you're told to do, because that way you get funding, that way you get a paycheck. It's a fraud. It's a fraud. So, we wouldn't suggest using Laetrile on your own. We're just trying to reveal information about the possible natural cancer cure. And if you stop calling it a cure, the FDA won't come down on you like a ton of bricks. Apricot kernels are now available to buy online, and many customers have praised their effects. I ordered these seeds two months ago, and this is what's happened to my husband's toenail fungus. Gone. Indigestion. Gone. Prostate issues, resolved, weight loss, 15 pounds. That was one of the comments on Amazon. I've lost 5 pounds and feel more energized. Yes, they are bitter, but unless you're a real weenie, you should have no problem chewing these up. I eat them by themselves or sometimes with a piece of dark chocolate. I'm now eating 8 a day and feel better than ever. Oh, sweetheart, don't eat 8 a day. No, that's, that's a bit much. For best results, you should combine the kernel with a low sugar diet. This method requires further research, but it's not dangerous to try. Laetril doesn't have any side effects as long as you stick with a few kernels a day, which is less than eight, sweetheart, whoever you are that's doing it with dark chocolate. Although it's still illegal, Laetril is considered a viable aid in fighting cancer. I'm not going to say that other word. And apple seeds. If you eat an apple, core and all, and crunch the seeds as well. An apple a day, you know, sometimes these crazy little sayings from days of yore aren't so crazy. So, when I eat an apple, I eat corn. I don't eat the stem, but 
I eat core and all. And I do bite the seeds. I'm a bite I'm a seed biter. <laughs> but yeah. Research and you know, big pharma and all of these other and especially people that are heavily invested into the medical industry, they'll all tell you, Oh, poo poo poo. You know those things from thousand years ago or two thousand years ago or even just four or five hundred years ago, those things don't work near as well as what we've got now with our medications. Really? Really? A lot of a lot of the reason why most people died way back when was because of sanitation issues. You had people that knew how plants worked and they knew that they're here to help us to feed us, to nourish us, to keep us healthy, to keep the whole system thriving. We forgot that link somewhere along the way. And it's sad. It really is sad. Okay. I have one more that I wanted to get to medicine-wise. Um, let's see, do I want to do, or maybe not, I thought I did, oh, nope, not it, hmm, 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 yes, there it is, okay, from healthnutnews.com, is this another one of those, am I going to have to, I'm really concerned now <laughs> about some of these websites. Okay, healthnutnews.com. A holistic doctor is under investigation for speaking out about vaccinations. Hmm. Now, a note from Aaron. Who is Aaron? Oh, this was posted by Aaron Elizabeth on May of this year, May 28th of this year. Our source for the CBC, or the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, a notoriously fake news site whose reputation has gone down the drain, wants a trustworthy publication, it's made a turn for the worse. In fact, the CBC did a piece on me and a few other top health news sites where they lied and called us inaccurate and fake news, while failing to even give the names of our sites correctly. So, and even after being called out publicly, they still haven't fixed the article. I love how ignorant they are at stating that Dr. Churchill continually refers to herself as Dr. Churchill when doing um, her intro videos. That's because she is. Then they state that vaccines don't cause cancer, and yet, here are, and here's a link, here are 60 lab studies that show the clear link between cancer and vaccinations. So, Dr. Dina Churchill, the Halifax, Canada-based chiropractor who owns and operates Oxford Chiropractic, Inc., is a blogger, author, and public speaker, and also runs a Facebook page identifying her as the innovator in women's health and wellness. And she's being investigated by her regulatory authority for her personal views on vaccines. Can you say Nazi Germany? What's going on here? Yes. That's right, Grammy. Malware bites got my back. Yeah. And it don't bite me. <laughs> well, according to John Sutherland, executive director of Nova Scotia College of Chiropractors, the college's register filed a complaint last week against Churchill. She now has 10 business days to respond before a committee reviews the case to determine next steps, which range from the ability to levy a fine to suspend her license. Or the matter could be referred to a hearing committee where the statutory rules are the same as a Nova Scotia court. But essentially, they could take away her license because of her views on vaccines. Hmm. Now, I'm thinking committee... Anytime something goes to committee, it always takes for frickin' ever, unless it's probably something like this, and then they'll bada-bing, bada-boom, get it done. 
So, on their website, the college states vaccination and immunization are established public health practices. Okay, I agree with that. They are established public health practices in the prevention of infectious diseases. And yet, it, they, it does not say they are proven public health practices in the prevention of infectious diseases. You really need to pay attention to the wording of a lot of this stuff. Established is a far cry from proven. So, chiropractors beware. They also say that the appropriate sources and education for parents or for patients regarding vaccination and immunization are public health authorities and health professionals with the scope of practice that includes vaccination. This is according to John Sutherland. We take that guidance seriously, and if need be, we're prepared to use our discipline process to seek compliance, comply, or be booted with the college policy. How much in kickbacks are you getting, Mr. John Sutherland? Now, check out that statement. As one chiropractor said today, it's amazing that a holistic school has bent over backwards for Big Pharma. As another pointed out, it's a regulatory body, not an actual school. And many in the U.S. hadn't even heard of this college, but just to set the record straight, <coughs> Too bad this regulatory body doesn't let doctors have the freedom to talk about their body or our bodies and keeping them healthy as we see fit. Now, if this doctor is talking about practices outside her scope, what's the problem? If she were saying, go get your vaccines, I bet they'd be thrilled. But since she speaks of the proven danger, she may lose her license to practice. Now, I do have to state that chiropractors, they don't just crunch bones. You know, they don't just pop your back back into place or your hips or your knees or whatever, any kind of joint that needs to be popped back into place. That's not all they do. They also deal with nutrition. A lot of people don't realize chiropractors go to medical school. And then they go to another four years of specializing in nutrition and how the foot bone connects to the ankle bone that connects to the shin bone that connects to the knee bone and why they have to connect properly and how that communication flow needs to work properly. So actually, chiropractors get a hell of a lot more education when it comes to actual health care, not medicine, health care. In one of Dr. Churchill's videos, she emotionally explains that people are given vaccines that haven't been adequately tested, because if it's a vaccine, it can be fast-tracked and be out and on the market within six months. Check it out. She's rightfully alarmed and concerned and she has every right to be. She also says that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, well, no, propagation is, yeah, they are the Center for Disease Control and Propagation in the United States, has a financial bi uh, bias related to vaccines, which they do. How many patents do they own on vaccines? And it's not just vaccines that Churchill has strong opinions on. She's also extensively reviewed The Truth About Cancer, which is a series that this author started with Dr. Mercola, who is her better half of nine years, as well as essential oils use, and the fact that wearing an underwire bra makes a person more susceptible to cancer than smoking, and that coffee enemas have healing powers for cancer patients all things that are making her a target. After all this, we'd suggest that folks go to Life University where they can speak their mind because this is Orwellian. So while many doctors claim that there are immensely high and rigid standards, 
that vaccines must meet before regulati regulators will ultimately approve them for use as a standard of care, we all know that's not actually true. We love peer-reviewed studies and we encourage people to do their due diligence, but where some doctors might ignore what doesn't fit their narrative, we won't, and we don't think you should either. And it seems Dr. Churchill doesn't either. So good for her. And there is a list of sources, or at least one source here at the bottom of it. So, uh, ooh, and a couple other things. 60 lab studies that now confirm cancer link to vaccine you probably had as a child. Yeah, that's another link attached at the bottom of this. So please do some research. There's several videos on here. And, you know, not only is she a smart cookie, but she's a pretty lady, too. So, you know, you men folk may want to pay attention just because, well, she's eye candy. Um, what's that? New normal. Oh, that's just crazy. Paris. Frickin' Frenchies. I needed another sip. <sighs> Everybody's so concerned that social media, and they might be slurred or slandered on social media, and someone might be off-ended. <sighs> really? You know, if somebody does something that um, is harmful to others, is there not a uh, punishment on the books for such things? If you do not apply them to all, then don't apply them to any. That's my thought process. Okay. Let's see. Now I will get to the other Florida. Because this one's just freaking insane. And I just saw it in the RLM chat, and I don't remember who it was that shared it, but this is from Fox35Orlando.com. Yes, Flash, you can give me shit about using another Fox link. <laughs> A Florida man asks Sheriff Office to test narcotics he bought to ensure it was meth. Huh. Apparently, the Putnam County Sheriff's Office says that 49-year-old Douglas Peter Kelly of Hawthorne was arrested and charged with possession of methamphetamines. Now, see, why do... He's an adult. He should be able to decide. Why is that illegal? To possess something that you're going to take into your own body. Why is that a crime? Crazy-ass people. They said that on Tuesday, and Kelly contacted the sheriff's office and said that he'd purchased methamphetamine about a week earlier and had a bad reaction after smoking the narcotic. The suspect told them that because of the violent reaction he had after smoking the drug, he believes that he was sold the wrong narcotic. Kelly is said to have went on to tell the detectives in the... Um, in the drug unit that he wanted the substance tested because he wanted to press charges on the person who sold him the wrong narcotic. Now, see, there I could see where, okay, instead of putting this guy in jail, how about the guy that sold him the wrong stuff or sold him tainted stuff? That is fraud. Or with intent to do bodily harm to another. He went to the sheriff's office so that they could test the narcotics he purchased. He handed the de detectives a clear crystal-like substance wrapped in aluminum foil. And the sheriff's office said that the substance field tested positive for methamphetamine, the drug Kelly intended to purchase. He was arrested and charged and is being held on a $5,000 bond. Isn't that special? Protect and serve my dying ass. Um, actually, no, Rob Works. I saw this link over on Facebook. <laughs> that was kind of funny. You don't like her face, Graham? Sorry. 
She's got tatas. <laughs> Okay. Let me put this over on the effing site as well. Paste. Oh, some people are just plain doy. And where is that? There. There. That's the perfect little emoticon for that. Which, by the way, once again, if you've got a little bit of spare money, come on over here to freedomsnetwork.com, click on the donate button and donate to Freedoms Network to help cover the server fees, because if you don't, it will go dark June 23rd. So, please, please, if you can, come on over and donate. Keep this one up. There's lots of people that share a lot of really good information over here, so, and it is not like Facebook. Trust me. So, yes, well, yeah, see ya, Vinny, I know, yeah, Grimmy, she, her eyes are, but, yeah, I figured you guys wouldn't have a problem with the, as you sh move down, <laughs> am I stereotyping you gentlemen, yes, I am. Okay, let's see. How about we get to one more? Yeah, let's let's go with this one. This one is from zerohedge.com. Um and they're wanting me to dismiss my ad blocker. No, sorry. Former Evergreen professor warns Congress about cult of campus pro progressivism. Hmm. Apparently, Brett Weinstein warned members of Congress last week that Evergreen State College is merely the most visible example of the despotic cult of social justice on college campuses. Weinstein began his testimony to the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform by alluding to the one-year anniversary of the protest at which 50 Evergreen students, whom he said had he had never met, disrupted his class to accuse him of racism and demand his resignation. Well, because sling and slurs is ever so much easier than actually having to do some research and spew some facts. The protests were originally sparked by the professor's criticism of the annual Day of Absence, an event that asked white students and faculty to vacate the campus for a day of diversity programming. Programming. What part of that do you not get? Jeez. People only read what they want to read. And I see this shit and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm reading what I want to read. But wow. Wow. Despite attempting to reason with the protesters, Weinstein recalled the uh, activists had no apparent interest in the very dialogue they seemed to invite and said that they were shouting down my actual students, some of whom had known me for years. Campus police advised Weinstein to leave the campus, saying they could not ensure his safety. But the protests continued to escalate climaxing when students held the school's president and other high-ranking administrators hostage. Is that not terrorism? Acts of violence or force used to persuade someone one way or another? Uh -huh, it's an act of terrorism, Han, by definition. Yeah, that was until they agreed to fully comply with a list of demands. Extortion? Terrorism? Yeah. Doing a good job there, Ivory Towers of Educraption, teaching those children how to extort their way through life. Guess what? They're going to find out somewhere down the road, probably not too far down the road, that someone ain't going to put up with their shit. And they can take their extortion right up their ass. The hostage-taking earned the students praise from faculty members. See? Osher encouraged the little pukes. 
but drew a rebuke from the school's board of trustees. Oh, board of trustees, those are the ones that, you know, kind of help pay for shit, aren't they? Which called the protest tactics indefensible. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. Referencing his subsequent experience at Evergreen State, which later led to a $3.8 million lawsuit against the institution, Weinstein warned the committee that lawmakers should take my tale as cautionary. Weinstein, however, warned against simply characterizing the demonstrations as a free speech crisis, asserting that far more pernicious problems lurk beneath that surface. There is a free speech crisis on college campuses. But one can certainly make that argument, but that portrayal is at least as misleading as it is informative. Which, yeah, there is a free speech crisis, but it's not the one that's in your face. Those are the ones that are, yeah, they're exercising their freedom of speech, but they're quelling others. They demand they get that right while demanding that others should not have that right. If that's the way it works, then it's not a right, and neither one of you get it. And if you demand it for yourself, then you have to demand it for everyone else. If you're calling it a right, quote unquote. So what is occurring on college campuses is about power and control. Speech is impeded as a last resort, used when people or groups fail to self-censor in response to a threat of crippling stigma and the destruction of their capacity to earn. These tools are being used to unhook the values that bind us together as a nation. Equal protection under the law, the presumption of innocence, a free marketplace of ideas, the concept that people should be judged by the content of their character rather than the color of their skin. According to Weinstein, the wave of activist demonstrations functions much like a cult in which the purpose is only understood by the leaders and the rest of them seduced into the carefully architected fiction and yeah pretty much they feed you all of this lovely propaganda but it's with a spoonful of sugar to make that propaganda go down and they they work on the feels you know they get people in the feels and they get them when they really are just trying to figure out life and i i've got to say this i blame parents too for this shit i did not raise my children to be like that and parents that coddle their kids and make excuses for their kids and demand that everybody gets a partic participation trophy and, you know, that, oh, now, don't do anything that might make little Johnny lose some self-esteem. Self-esteem is cheap. Help them earn some self-worth or realize their self-worth. Self-worth is a hell of a lot more important than self-esteem. Self-esteem is ego. Throughout his testimony, the former Evergreen State professor revisited the extraordinary details of his experience at the school, analyzing specific events and strategies that were utilized by students in an effort to advance a variety of radical objectives. Something is seriously and dangerously amiss, Weinstein declared. Partisan polarization and political corruption have rendered government ineffective, predatory, and often cruelly indifferent to the suffering of American citizens. Tribalism is the natural result. And, you know, tribalism isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, small communities taking care of itself and its members until they start demanding that everybody else do things the way they do. You want to set an example and show people how you're doing things and yet not bully them into doing how you are? Fine. 
But once you start crossing that line of bullying people and telling them you must do it this way or there will be punishments, there will be dire repercussions, that's when you step across the line. That's when I call bullshit on all of your, but it's for society, I call bullshit. For your society, maybe, I don't want to be part of that one. Okay. I need to go check out the pig. See what happened this date in history. Okay. And then I think I have one, yeah, I do have one more from Florida that I have to get, I have to, I have to, have to, have to, but it's a funny, so we'll end with a funny, but <clears throat> over here on PIGazette.com, where Hambo and Porcus just really are crazy. Okay. The word of the day is opportunity. It's what your boss's pesky hot button problems become when he, she, he, she, or it decides to assign you the task of solving it for him. See also passing the buck and crap flows downhill. Yup. In their quotable quotes section, I think you'll like this one, Grim. If you want to get laid, go to college. If you want an education, go to the library. Frank Zappa. I'm going to just put that over here in the RLM chat real quick. Just because I think that needs to be here. I hope I did that right. Did I do that right, Grant? Oh, yay, I did. Quote added. Yay! Good one, Hambo and Porcus. I do like that one. Okay. Now, scrolling down to this date in history. Oh, wait a minute here. Here's something. Most of my generation of 50 plus were homeschooled in many ways. Oh, let's see. I think this is an oldie but a goodie. So, the following are recent. Um, the following was recently passed along from a friend. So, number one, my mother taught me to appreciate a job well done. If you're going to kill each other, do it outside. I just finished cleaning. Yep, yep, I've heard that one before. Number two, my mom taught me religion. You better pray that will come out of the carpet. Oh, no, we had hardwood floors. Um, and I got to scrub and wax them every weekend. Number three, my father taught me logic because I said so. That's why. You know, my mom used to say that, not my dad. Dad just started pulling the belt out. Number four, my mother taught me foresight. Make sure you wear clean underwear in case you're in an accident. Mom, mom, I've actually told my mom this. Mom, it does no good for me to have clean underwear on when I get in an accident because if I get in an accident odds are I'm going to have an accident in my underwear as well so it's not gonna make a damn bit of difference if they were clean beforehand because they will not be clean later number five my father taught me irony keep crying and I'll give you something to cry about now I do remember hearing that one a lot number six my mother taught me about contortionism just look at that dirt on the back of your neck Mom, hun, we, we don't develop eyes on the back of our head like you do. Number seven, my mother taught me about stamina. You're still there, or you'll sit there until all that spinach is gone. Now, see, my mom never said that to me because I actually like spinach. So, hmm. And we ate what mom put in front of us or we went hungry. You got that damn many mouths to feed. Do you eat what's put in front of you or you go hungry? Number eight, my mother taught me about weather. 
this room of yours looks like as if a tornado went through it. Okay, yeah, I did hear that a time or two, and, and I repeated that. I passed that on, the mother lineage thing. Passed it on to my youngest daughter, and she has passed it on to her daughter now. So, you know, keeping up the family tradition. Number nine, my mother taught me about hypocrisy. If I told you once, I've told you a million times, don't exaggerate. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. If I've told you once, I've told you a million times. Which is it, Mom? Once or a million times? Okay, number 10. My mother taught me about behavior modification. Stop acting like your father. Oh, I have a couple of brothers that got that one. Mm-hmm. My mother taught me about envy. There are millions of less fortunate children in this world who don't have wonderful parents like you do. Okay, I don't think I ever heard that one, but I, di I heard the one of there's lots of children in this world that don't have enough to eat. And my brother Mikey, one time when mother said that, said, well, then I can just send them my share. Dad didn't find that amusing. <laughs> Number 12, my mother taught me about anticipation. Just wait until we get home. Oh, no, Mom didn't wait till we got home. If you needed a scolding, you got it right there in public. She was big into that public humiliation shit. Worked. Didn't do it again. Number 13, my mother taught me about receiving. You're going to get it when your father gets home. Mm, I heard that one time or two or ten or twenty. Number 14, my mom taught me about medical science. If you don't stop crossing your eyes, you're going to get stuck that way. I did hear that one a time or two. And now my grandkids tell me, Grammy, cross your eyes again. <laughs> Number 15. My mother taught me ESP. Put your sweater on. Don't you think I know when you're cold? You know, and that's one thing Circles said one time, and it really stuck. Parents make children put on sweaters when the parents are cold. It's true. Number 16, my father taught me humor. When that lawnmower cuts off your toes, don't come running to me. <laughs> mm, never happened in our family. Yeah. Uh, number 17, my mother taught me how to become an adult. If you don't eat your vegetables, you'll never grow up. Which incited a lot of children into the Peter Pan syndrome. Number 18, my mother taught me about my roots. Shut that door behind you. Do you think you were born in a barn? Well, no. No. Number 19, my mother taught me wisdom. When you get to be my age, you'll understand. Oh, my God. Is that ever true? Wow. Yeah, Mom, Mom knew that. And number 20, my father taught me about justice. One day, you'll have kids, and I hope they turn out just like you. Now, see, that's the mother's curse. That's the mother's curse, and it does work. Trust me. <laughs> Although, I think it's a little wonky, because I got cursed with one like me, and then I got cursed with one like my ex. Wow. <laughs> so, this date in history, the 15th of June, 1918, when northern Pennsylvania gets one inch of snow in June, a reality-challenged volunteer state meathead sets his hair on fire and declares a new ice age. Mm-hmm. This date in history, the 15th of June, 1960, Argentina runs to the United Nations and whines about the way the Israelis snatched Adolf Eichmann. Israel responds with a non-negotiable bite me, which Israel usually responds with a non-negotiable bite me, no matter who you are. This date in history, the 15th of June, 1969. Rednecks from sea to shining sea celebrate when CBS finally adds some real American culture to the lineup with the first hee-haw airing 
picking and a grinning, locked and loaded. And I don't know about anybody else, but I loved Hee Haw. And YouTube, bless your heart, you still got Hee Haw on there. And every once in a while, I go there just for reminisce and giggle. Because it was just giggles. This date in history, the 15th of June, 1982. A reality insulated U.S. Supreme Court gets damn generous with your money. Decrees that even non citizen tykes get to be government schooled. And finally, this date in history, the 15th of June, 1998, displaying a wry sense of humor. U.S. Supreme Court says inmates are protected by Americans with Disabilities Act. Oh, the U.S. Supreme Court. They're just so fun. Scotus. Or as Grimmy says, Scrotus. Pretty much. Thank you, Hambo and Porkus. Come on over to PIGazette.com. Tell them Grammy sent you. And they'll probably run away screaming because they both know me. <laughs> Okay, I still got some time left, so let's go to this other one from Florida. This is from the New York Post.com from the other day. Man attempting to shoot raccoon shoots himself. Oops. And this was in Colorado Springs, Colorado. It was not a Florida. Why did I think it was a Florida one? Maybe I have one in my pocket. Oh, well. Police say that a 67-year-old Colorado man attempting to shoot a raccoon on a utility pole shot himself in the lower leg instead. Wow. Okay. I'm trying to picture. Where was this raccoon? What the? What the hell? The shooting was reported just after midnight on Tuesday in the southeast side of Colorado Springs. Southeast. So that's down by the, by the uh, army base. Uh, Colorado, Spring, Colorado Springs police say that the man was taken to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police say that the man told them he was using a handgun to shoot at the raccoon. Besides the leg wound, police say the man likely faced a citation for prohibited use of a weapon. Hmm. Alrighty then. Doofus. Um, what? Oh, I gotta go there. Thanks for that link, Grim. I gotta go there. Some people are just real douches. Have you ever noticed that? Kat Von D's unborn baby receives death wishes after anti-vaccine announcement. Wow. Well, she says, we have hesitancies and valid concerns about uh, injecting our baby with specific chemicals and toxins. I can't say as a blame you, sweetheart. Celebrity cat tattoo artist Kat Von D on Thursday unveil unveiled or revealed, excuse me, her unborn baby's been the subject of death wishes after she announced plans to forego vaccinations. You know, I just really don't get this. People, if you are so convinced that vaccines really work, what are you so scared of? Why are you afraid that someone is unvaccinated? Because if they happen to get whatever that dis-ease is that you're concerned about, if you've been vaccinated, which basically in your mind means you've been protected from it, then why are you afraid of it? Why are you afraid of them contracting an illness that you are protected from? I don't get your logic. Apparently, the controversy began last week after Von D complained she was tired of everyone offering her unsolicited parental advice and stated that she planned to raise her baby vegan and without vaccinations. I knew the minute we announced our pregnancy that we would be bombarded with unsolicited advice. Some good, some questionable, but unsolicited nonetheless. 
I also was prepared for the backlash and criticism we would get if we decided to open our personal approach to our pregnancy. My own father flipped out on me when I told him that we decided to ditch our doctor and go with a midwife instead. I don't have a problem with that. If she is trained, knows what she's doing, I don't have a problem with that. What the hell, Dad? Chill. I actually wanted to have home birth with my second child, but wow. Didn't happen. So, if you don't know what it's like, um, have people around you that think you are ridiculous, try being openly vegan. And if you don't know what it's like to have an entire world openly criticize, judge, throw uninformed opinions, and curse you, try being openly pregnant vegan on Instagram. Having a natural, drug-free home birth in water, which was what I wanted to do, but I didn't have anyone that... And my ex was not going to be any help whatsoever. With a, mid with, with a midwife and a doula. Who is doula? Oh, who has the intention of raising a vegan child without vaccinations. Uh, okay, you know, if you want to do the vegan thing, although I really think there are minerals and things that, there are nutritional things that you will be missing out on, sweetheart. And mm, My personal opinion. My point being, I already know what it's like to make life choices that are not the same as the majority. So your negative comments are not going to influence my choices. Actual research and educating myself will, which I am diligently doing. This is my body. This is my child. This is our pregnancy journey. Feel free to follow me on here if you like what, what I'm about, but whether it's tattooing or lipstick or animal rights or sobriety or feminism, I could give two shits less about feminism, ridiculous gothiness, black flower gardening, cats, or my adorable husband. Well, I don't know your husband and I, could, I don't follow you on Instagram. Sorry. But if you don't dig a certain something about what I post, I kindly ask that you press the unfollow button and move the fuck on. So before any one of you feel inspired to tell me how to do this, I would appreciate you keeping your unsolicited criticism to yourself. Honey, I got to I got to correct you on this. It is not unsolicited if you put that information out there. You opened yourself up for criticism and advice when you put that information out on social media. It's just a fact of life. Sorry. Hate to break that to you. Well, actually no I don't. More importantly, for those who have amazingly positive energy to send my way, I will gladly and graciously receive it with love. Don't pick and choose, sweetheart. Take the good with the bad because you can learn from the bad and it will help you appreciate the good even more. So, Apparently her admission did, didn't sit well with vaccine proponents who apparently wished her baby would die. In a subsequent Instagram post, Von D revealed her baby was constantly receiving death wishes and explained that she's not an anti-vaxxer, she's just skeptical about injecting her child with harmful chemicals after doing extensive research. Good for her! What we have found is that sometimes it isn't always so black and white, the LA Ink Star wrote on Thursday. While we believe medications, including vaccines, are not all bad, well, okay, that's your opinion, we also can't dismiss the fact that some may not be good for everyone. Agree with that one. It's not a one-size-fits-all thing, no matter how many charts they put out there. There are plenty of studies that show some vaccinations can work wonders. And there are also studies that show some people, including mothers and babies, may be more susceptible to vaccine injury more than others. It's unfair for anyone to expect me or any parent to take the word of the pharmaceutical companies who have much to gain from an industry worth billions without question and then have to dismiss any concerns of my own. So, okay. 
She doesn't use any chemicals derived from animal parts or use animal products in the manufacturing process, um, which goes against her vegan lifestyle. Okay, I'm happy for you. Hey, you're living your, you're living your beliefs. Go for it, girlfriend. But yeah, it is not unsolicited. You opened yourself up on social media. Therefore, you did solicit input. Just because you doesn't, don't like it doesn't mean that it's unsolicited. No, you opened yourself up for it. Sorry, cat. Okay. I'll just like that one. Thank you, Grim, for that link. Oh, I'm getting close to the end. Now, where do I... I had one other thing that I wanted to... Was it there? Was it there? Hmm. Maybe not. Let's see here. Huh. Okay, I'm just going to read you some of these headlines over here on um, alternativenews.com in their weird news part. Um, ew, um, wow, Human, humanity alert, sperm count plunges 59% due to mass chemical feminization of men. Okay, I gotta go there. <laughs> wow. There's some, there's some really interesting links on there, by the way. This is from nationalnews.com as well. A uh, rigorous new study conducted in the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and published in the science journal Human Reproduction Update finds that human sperm count production has declined 59.3% from 1973 to 2011, trending towards a collapse of the human population. That is via Science Daily. The researchers found a 59.3% decline in total sperm count among men in North America, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand who were not selected based on their fertility status. These findings strongly suggest a significant decline in male reproductive health that has serious implications beyond fertility and reproduction. Given recent evidence linking poor semen quality with a higher risk of hospitalization and death. So not only do you have less swimmers, but they're weaker swimmers too. The causes of the decline have been widely linked to chemical exposure, especially from agricultural chemicals like atrazine that are chemical castrators of men. These chemicals cause feminization of males, leading to hormonal disruptions and sperm population decline. And that decline, researchers found, is accelerating in Western nations like the United States and could lead to a collapse in human population, which I'm sure Mother Nature probably wouldn't argue too awful much. We have created plastic. She has plastic now. She can dispose of us. Although it's not the focus of this particular study, the same chemicals causing this plunge in sperm production may also be increasing non-male gender expression in biological males, leading to an increasing number of biological males to pursue transgender surgeries or lifestyles. Hmm. This biological fact remains adamantly denied by the anti-science political left in America, which pursues the magical science narrative that transgenderism is solely a choice and cannot be influenced by chemical exposure. Yet every biological scientist and chemist in the world knows that chemical exposure alters biological functions in humans. In fact, the very process of medical gender transition from a biological male to a female involves chemical castration using hormone disrupting prescription chemicals such as cipriter cipriterone hmm. 
and the common food packaging chemical BPA is also widely known to be a hormone disrupt and estrogen mimicker. Those who insist that choice alone can override the laws of chemistry and genetics are living a delusion. Bill Nye, anyone? Yeah, Bill Nye, the science guy. He's a frickin' actor, people! Biological sex expression is determined by genes and chemistry, including chemical exposure, not by wishes and hopes. Oh, I wish I were a real boy or a real girl, however the case may be for whoever it is. Environmental exposure to such chemicals is irrefutably a significant vector for sperm decline among men in Western nations. So while the current study didn't examine causes of the observed declines, sperm count has previously been plausibly associated with environmental and lifestyle influences including prenatal chemical exposure, adult pesticide exposure, smoking, stress, and obesity. Wow. Men, you gotta work to keep them soldiers working. Oh, it makes the frogs gay? I hate that. Yeah, vegan lifestyle is not necessarily an, I don't believe, a smart choice. Me personally. There are certain proteins, certain enzymes, that the best source for them is in animal products. Just putting that out there, my personal opinion. So, y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 3. Also on the RLM Spreaker channel, the RLM TuneIn radio station, the RLM, RLM Radio.xyz site. Um, let's see, all kinds of other RLM and um, and um, and um places. Also, later to be on the RLM YouTube channel and the RLM BitChute channel. Thanks, y'all, for listening in. Grimmy, did Flasher and Vinny get something figured out for tomorrow morning? Is there going to be like a different kind of dork table kind of thing going on with Flash? I, I saw you guys chatting the other day, and I was on my way, you know, swung in, check chat, check email, that kind of shit, went back outside again. Um, if there is, come on over and check it out. Eh, it'll be something new and interesting. Actually, uh, new and yet not so new, because Vinny and Flash did something a couple years ago. I believe. Um, also, Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimner is going to be on with um, the Blues, an arousing game of Trivial Pursuit, or trivia at least, going on in the RLM chat. And he will be followed directly by Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. Then, Sunday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Gary L. and Gigi's Boo with The Road Less Traveled. Be sure to stick around this evening because Grimmy will be here with balls to the wall. And Grim, honey, be very careful when you do that balls to the wall because sperm count plunges. Don't be hurting the swimmers, okay? Just putting that out there. So, um, oh, thank you, Grim. Yeah, I listened, I listened to that little bitty thing before you deleted it off of Spreaker. That's what it was. Basically, because I was going over to Spreaker to, I think, what was I doing at Spreaker? I was doing something on Spreaker. <laughs> Maybe I was actually getting my blog done, because I was kind of a slacker. I went out for pizza. Uh, let's see, I have... A little bit of time left, just a few more minutes. So let me see here. What do I have in my pocket? I know. I know. Okay, I'm going to share this one with you because, yeah, that alternativenews.com, it really is kind of cool. Kind of a cool site to go check out. All kind of interesting articles. And it's, it's basically just, you know, like a uh, drudge kind of thing. I quit going to Drudge a long time ago. Pissed me off, and it's like, eh, I'm done with you guys. So, uh, let me check out Oopy real fast. 
See if I got something. Just, just. Wow. 29 year old cat arrives at the California Humane Society. Holy shit. Oh, man. Okay. I got to do this. <laughs> From UPI.com. Strong winds set portable toilets flying through the air. Wow. Um, the shit hit the fan. Mother Nature was the fan. <laughs> <laughs> Video taken by a man in Commerce City, Colorado, captures a pair of portable toilets being lifted up into the air by a strong wind. The clip posted on the man's Facebook page features residents at the park enjoying a sunny day out until the sudden gust of wind begins to ravage their outdoor fun and party tent. The portable toilets are seen being carried across the sidewalk and then slamming into parked cars before one takes off into the sky. Fluids, <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it, fluids from the portable toilets also appear to leak out as it continues its upward journey before eventually crashing back down. Park goers shielded their children from flying debris during the incident with no one appearing to be seriously injured. Hopefully no one got shit faced or shit in the face. <laughs> wow, that's a good one to end on. Wow. Um Oh, it's their wall. Their okay. Good Grimmy. That's good. Oh, well, thanks, y'all, for listening in on this Freaker Friday evening. I hope you guys have an absolutely amazing weekend. I know mine's going to be busy, busy, busy. Um, but uh, I will be checking in from time to time. And uh, I guess I will catch you all later. So please remember, I really do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night.